Are you a fan of Star Wars, Marvel, Jurassic Park, The Office, or Disney and Pixar movies? Or do you just want a sleek, comfortable pattern shirt? Then you need to check out Roosevelt's.com. Roosevelt's clothing is the most eye-catching and comfortable clothing available on the market. From button-ups to hoodies, hats, and more, Roosevelt's truly has something for everyone. Check them out today at Roosevelt's.com. That is R-S-V-L-T-S dot com. And when you do, make sure to use promo code SWOGGLE to save 20% off your order. Made for those with a love of sports, pop culture, and all of the above, this is clothing for the bold and fun for those who dare mighty things. So that's promo code SWOGGLE to save 20% off new clearance and restocks at roosevelts.com. Guys, it is time for part two. This is going postal. Another episode of Small Talk. Joe Shoes, the captain among captains, part two of our interview. This is it. I'm Dylan. That's George. George, talk to him. Guys, this podcast is brought to you by our good friends over at the Roosevelt's brand, R-S-V-L-T-S dot com. Use code SWOGGLE to save yourself 20 percent at going postal on all forms of social media at dylan postal on all forms of social media youtube.com slash dylan postal you get free video versions of this podcast twitch.tv slash dylan postal swoggle auction.com get yourself a free ten dollar credit over at whatnot and of course the one-stop shop for all things swoggle dylan postal.com links to the merch store the pro wrestling tea store everything but yeah like dylan said part Two of Captain Joe Shoes, a man that hopefully you got a little peek behind the curtain, a little more information in the last episode. We're going to keep that train going, get you a little bit more information about our good friend, our good buddy, Captain Joe Shoes. Uh, He's gone by many, many names. You heard a little bit about it in the last episode. You're going to hear more about it now. Uh, It's great. It's a good time. Dylan, you got the appetizer and now is the main course, so to speak, if we're talking food and we love talking food on this podcast. Shoes and I love talking food. So guys, here's part two. Guys, let's talk about Mad Cat Beard Care. They make my beard feel soft, silky smooth, and they can do the same for yours. A one-man show since 2019, Mad Cat uses a portion of their sales to care for local stray cats. That money covers their medical bills and finds them safe spaces and forever homes. Their products are made to order with vitamins and all natural oils that promote strong, healthy hair and moisturize your skin as well. They've got exclusive scents for myself as well as other wrestlers like my good pal Brian Myers, Mr. Kennedy, and Ring of Honor legend Delirious. Make sure to check out all of their scents along with my swoggled scent which has notes of lavender and sage. I absolutely love this scent. And guys, we've got an exclusive offer for listeners of Going Postal. Use promo code SWOGGLED to save yourself 15% on your orders only at madcatbeardcare.com. That is SWOGGLED with a D on the end to save yourself 15% on your orders at madcatbeardcare.com. Guys, that's 15% with promo code SWOGGLED. And remember, the Mad Cat makes a happy beard. So uh, here's a hot take, because I know like we like doing that on this show. Uh-huh. Hasbro suck. We like nope. LJNs, baby. And I remember clearly... You like LJNs he- because... <sighs> When I, I, I find Hasbro's to be so damn disappointing. And I'll tell I, I remember the first the first time I saw them. I'm at the mall with my mom and my brother. Oh, We're doing man. a little shopping. We pass by the KB <laughs> store, and right in the front of KB, they yeah. have this end cap with new WWF Hasbro figures, series one. 
Yeah. And now I didn't know this was a thing, you know, like there was Uh no internet. There was no major wrestling figure podcast to tell me that these were coming out. (laughs) How the hell am I supposed to know? And I'm going, Oh my God, there's new wrestlers. Why are they so fucking small? Oh no, no. So, So that day my mom said, because remember, LJNs, people don't remember how expensive LJNs were in like 87. They were like eight bucks each, which today adjusted for inflation is like $47. <laughs> uh, I just did the math in my head so you can trust me. It's right. Um, but like Hasbro's were, I, I want to say $3.99, maybe $4.99 at the time. Okay. Um, so I said, Mom, can I, you know, can I get one? Just because I'm in front of a toy store and I want a toy. Um and I convinced, she goes, okay, you could get one. Your brother could get one. So I convinced my brother that we should get Axe and Smash because we didn't have demolition toys at home. Okay. So okay. that was, we got Axe and Smash that day. Those were my first Hasbros. And they look good. I, I stand by. I think Smash is one of the best Hasbros yes. in the entire I agree. set. I, I had agree. a vote in the major pod hall of fame this year i voted for smash in the hasbro category i i fully agree with that um i think that figure rules like it's perfect yep looking back but at the time i was like oh my god like they're so little they're tiny like what Uh, you know and i couldn't get over that so i think i tapped on hasbro's like maybe wave two my brother hung around for a little bit but i want to say like the last one we would have gotten would have been like Macho King. That's so upsetting to me, but it makes sense because you're going from these larger than life toys, these uh, vulcanized life. weapons. Yeah, 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 and and until to these little actual like play toys. That's crazy. But that that's that's crazy. That's that's it makes perfect sense as to how, but how crazy it is still is mind boggling to me. Yeah, well, you got to remember, too, that even like you and I, there's five years between us. Yeah. Yep. So that's like a considerable gap yeah. when it comes to the trend. Like my brother's three years younger than me. Yep. And what was cool for him was not my thing. You know what I yep. mean? Like either I had moved on or like I was into something way earlier. So whereas I I look at myself as a He-Man, Thundercats, okay. 80s wrestling G.I. Joe yep. guy. My brother is very much Ninja Turtles, real me. Ghostbusters. Yeah. Yeah. Hasbro's. You know what I mean? So that's that was his childhood. Mine is different. But it, when you're a kid, it doesn't take much in that no. age gap for the trends to be considerably different. Yep. Talking toys. We're talking wrestling figures. We got to get to the point in your life where uh, what brought us together... What was your introduction to the major pod world? Because I don't um, know this. Was it just uh, you and Brian talk? This is how I'm going to guess. And tell me if it's wrong. Cause it probably is. You got to talking to Brian randomly about El Jans or knowing he started up the podcast with Matt. And then just getting so into you're, the So you're way off. You're okay. not even in the ballpark. So- even better. By the time the podcast started, Brian is full fledged my friend. By that point, mm-hmm. um, so yep. but before that, but is it wrestling? We were, no, it's Mets. Yeah, it's it. Yeah, it's it because of the Mets. But like our friendship grew because like okay. we're talking to each other every day. Because <clears throat> um, really, the 2015 season, the Mets end up going to the World Series, so it was like a very exciting year. Yep. So Brian and I are literally talking to each other every day, like throughout the day, just so like we're becoming like real friends. And by the time the podcast starts, it's one of those things where it's like, hey, me and Matt are starting this thing. Give it a listen. Let me know. So I'm like, OK. And then I listen to the first episode. I'm like, oh, that's you know what? Like this could this could do a couple hundred downloads, I think. <laughs> yeah, Um, I thought it. It had potential that's, that's, to be something. Yes. I never in my wildest dreams that I would I imagine it would turn into. It. Yeah. I mean, if any two guys were going to host this podcast, it's them. I, yep. And 
so early on, really, like Brian knew I was a figure guy because him and I had had the conversations. So he knew yep. I was a collector back then. And one of the things I used to have, I had a full collection of original San Francisco toy makers, ECW figures, all autographed. I had the entire set autographed, including variants, except the No Noose New Jack, which I didn't know existed until this podcast. Uh, but even those, that weird wave three, which was like the target exclusive with Tommy in the yellow shirt and, okay. you know, like I still had it all, had them all autographed, including, wow. but not limited to Mike Awesome. Because one of my oh. buddies had tagged with Mike Awesome in Japan and he did a show in Jersey and my buddy hit me up and was like, Hey, I'm going to go hang out with Mike Awesome in Jersey. You want to come by? <laughs> and I like brought my figure with me and I'm like, maybe Mike Awesome will. Um, and then when I moved to Florida, uh -huh. I sold my entire collection and nobody fucking wanted it. Nobody wanted these ECW figures oh, back in 2010. No. So oh. every single, single carded figure, the only thing I didn't have was the ring. I didn't have the ring with the exclusive Van Damme and Sabu. Okay. But every single released figure I had, all mint, on card, <coughs> mint on card autographed, every yeah. single one. Um, I end up, one of my best friends ends up buying the whole set from me. I go, I don't know, bro. Can you give me 200 bucks for it? Gave me 200 bucks for the entire set. Uh, now Brian at that time when we're still, even before the podcast, Mike awesome was like his white whale, the autographed Mike awesome. And I'm like, bro, I had it. I had it. Here's where I got it. It was a JPW show. He did like one show in Jersey. I went and hung out with him afterwards, whatever. I told him the whole story. He's like, I, I go, but the, I'm still friends with the guy who had it, but it got damaged in a flood. So now oh. that, that figure doesn't even exist. Then when the podcast starts, um, Brian's talking about his ECW collection and he mentions the Mike Awesome. He tells my Mike Awesome story, which is like yeah. the first time I'm ever mentioned. And he's just like, he didn't know what to call me. So he called, like, he was calling me like my friend Joe, which was like yep. very odd because like no one calls me Joe. Yep. It's, it's like since I'm 16, everyone just calls me shoes. shoes. I have like, and I'm not saying this, um, Jokingly, like I have younger cousins, nieces, nephews who don't know I have a real name. <laughs> I'm just Uncle Shoes or Shoes. It's like, like if you say when I, it's like when I text you in 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 groups and I call you Joe, it's because I'm yelling at you or you finally got under my skin that day, and it's, <laughs> yeah. it's a Joe or Joseph. <laughs> Joseph, we're, we're not doing this today, Joseph. We're not doing this, not today. <laughs> nope, nope. No, 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 no. <laughs> um, so it was like really weird. And he, like, whenever I would get brought up on the show, which wasn't much, there was no reason to bring me up on the show. It's not like I was actively collecting or whatever, but it was always my friend Joe, which was weird. Yeah. Um, and then he mentioned he needed the thrill zone carded Chris Candido figure. Mm -hmm. And I was like, Bro, I had, I, I've never heard you mention this figure before. I had that. I had that figure auto because Candido, like when I first got into the business, Candido was on every single show with me. So I was on two shows in Milwaukee with him. The I remember. Man. Yeah, it was the best. The best. I love Chris Candido was like my first vet. You know what I mean? I, I yeah. never got to wrestle him, but on every show, he'd sit, Chris, I don't think I've ever met anyone in my life who loved wrestling the yeah. way Chris did. And he didn't care who you were, nope. what you acted like, what you tasted like, what you liked, what you didn't like. If you yeah. just wanted to talk about wrestling, yep. he wanted to sit down and talk about wrestling with you. And so he would just sit down and just me, him and whoever was sitting around us were like, Oh yeah. Did you watch this tape from pro wrestling? Noah? Like, Oh, he's oh yeah. Well, what, what's going on there? Like, and he would get so excited about it. And it was the coolest thing because I'm like, this is fucking Chris Candido. This rules. And so I got him to sign my figures back then. And I call my buddy who had bought my collection. I'm like, hey, do you still have this Thrill Zone Chris Candido figure? And he's like, yeah. And I go, would you be willing to sell it to Brian? So I like negotiated the deal. And Brian, like, I'm, I'm really happy. Like, 
that yeah. my, one of my figures is like in this that's pretty, big that's pretty collection. Awesome. Yep. You know, that it's, you know, being displayed somewhere, you know, yeah. where it means someone to someone. Like, exactly. I, I kind of like that. Coat. Yep. Yeah. You know, and for Brian to be such a mark for Candido. <laughs> that's huge, like, too. Yeah. That, that it kind of makes it even better from, yep. from that point of view. So, so that's how, like, kind of I got introduced to the podcast. The world, And I'd yeah. get brought up, like, here and there. Like, if, if like, I met up with Brian and we'd go to, like, a Mets game in St. Louis or something, he'd yep. be like, oh, you know, memories of St. Louis. Oh, me and my friend Joe just went to this Mets game, whatever. But then Live 6 in Baltimore, where you and I met, we're coming out of COVID. And I just yep. want to get out of the house. So I... Hey, Brian, would it be cool if I came to the show? Is that going to be okay? Like, I'll buy a ticket, whatever. Like, I'm not, you know, he's like, dude, just, just fucking come. I'll put you on the list. I'm like, okay, great. So I decide I'm going to make a road trip out of this drive up from Florida. I have family in the Carolinas. I'm going to stop, see them for a day, drive to Baltimore, get to see the show, and then, you know, make the drive back. And the, so I get there and I've met Matt. But like I don't know Matt at this point. Yeah. Same thing with Mark. Like I had met Mark, but I don't yep. like know Mark. Um, so we're at the the night before they were filming a bonus episode, uh, recording a bonus episode of the pod yep. where they're like booking the live show, and I'm just in the room for it. And then there was this Yokozuna spot because that was the big thing in the FWF at the time was Brian yep. singing Yokozuna's music. Yep. So the idea was that Mark would come out in the sumo suit. Mark brought the sumo suit, but he couldn't come out because he needed to be the one to hit the music. So he needed to be at the desk. And it was like, oh, fuck, like, what are we going to do? We need someone to be Yokozuna. And Brian was like, oh, Shoes is here. Shoes will do it. <laughs> so I'm, like, I'm like, he's like, you cool? I'm like, yeah, okay, fine, whatever. Um, So day of the show like i'm I'm doing my yokozuna entrance tape study you know on youtube why well, <laughs> that's that's a shoot i'm like okay let me try to get this yokozuna entrance down um and then like i got to you know i meet you we, we do the show every you know it was fine then the next show was in oshkosh yep and i was like hey you know what like i had a really good time at the show i'm just gonna go to the next show hit up brian hey would it be cool if i just came like and hung out like it's like, yeah, like, sure, dude, whatever. So I go, cool. And um, like a couple days before, he goes, hey, are you still coming to Oshkosh? And I go, yeah. And he goes, bring the sumo suit. Uh, you're booked. And I'm like, what the fuck? Like, uh, uh, okay. <laughs> um, so now I come out and I do Yoko Shuna again. Uh, you know, and I... I made up the name Yoko Shuna, despite, you know, how, however Matt wants to spell it. So you could sell t-shirts with it. Oh, I, <laughs> Matt made me an elf too. Like you, Yoko Shuna. <laughs> um, so that was that show. Then the next one, the next live show was the one where I tried to eat the sandwich and yep. almost died. <laughs> uh, but in between that, um, in between that is when we do the PBR commercial. Yes. Now, Everything I've done with the podcast is by happenstance and mistake. Uh, before that was boozing with the toys. Brian, the only reason I was on boozing with the toys at the beginning was Brian had a booking in Orlando. I picked him up from the airport, hung out. We got something to eat. I took him to the show. And then he's like, oh, I'm, I got to go to Matt's house. We're going to do this boozing with the toys thing. He's like, just just come in and hang out. And I'm like, oh, shit, like. Like, I don't really know Matt. Is he going to be okay with me coming to his house? And Brian's like, yeah, 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 it's fine. It's fine. And I'm like, oh, geez, like, I don't know. I've heard stories. The guy gets kind of you know, <laughs> uncomfortable. I know he doesn't know me. So I'm like, fuck, man. Like, I'm fucking nervous walking into this guy's house. And um, so I, I go in and he's like, do you want to see the toy room? Obviously, the answer is yes. Like, yep. I didn't want to ask because, like, I'm I, like, I'm sure he's, like, not happy that I'm there to begin with. So I didn't want to ask, but he, like, puts it out there. So I'm like, fuck, yes. Like, I got to see the toy room. So he shows me the toy room. I'm so – I have never been more scared in my life. To walk. Bro, I know. 
I know what I am. You know what I mean? Like I'm fucking yep. cute, but I'm a big cute. And the Scott Hall walk thing through the door was real. real. It was. It's real, man. I, and there's so much. There's just un- so it's much. It's undescribable it's- how you walk in there. And I mean, I just feel like no matter what, you can be the lightest on your feet, and you're gonna walk in there like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna touch the carpet or the floor too much. I'm gonna and- breathe too hard, and everything is gonna topple. It's a hundred percent. And it's very once you get in. And you're past that initial wall, yep. that sidewall. It's almost like you can almost hear like the like the the chanting, like oh, because yeah. everything it. just opens up, Everything's and you safe. see the displays of everything. And yeah. being in that toy room is sensory overload. It really yeah. is. It's it's completely overwhelming because of just how much he has yeah. that you don't know where to look. Yep. I, there's, I mean, if the wrestlers it was the funkos it was the ghostbusters it was star wars it like weird shit too you know just like the turtles like my yeah. god like <laughs> so we do the first boozing with the toys from matt's kitchen and it was like three hours long and this is the one where like as they're talking about something and i i go on twitter quick and i see that the undertaker has done cameos so oh, okay. i go oh my god Oh my God. Oh my God. Brian, Brian, you got to see this. So he's like, he looks at it and he goes, go in the bathroom right now. Watch it. Come back if it's good. So I go in the bathroom. I start watching it and it's like, grandma, 91 years of devastation. Yeah. Yeah. And then there's the one that's like, James, you're a wonderful son and a wonderful baseball player. <laughs> so like that becomes like the. We're like watching, and you gotta like for as much as kayfabe is dead that we want to say, like the Undertaker was like the one thing that was still real, yes. right? All I I think about it all the time is like when the Undertaker got an Instagram, I was like, oh man, what is this? I mean, everything's done. Everything, everything is done. It's now, understandable, but everything, everyone's just a normal person now. But now to that point, as much as kayfabe is dead. At the same time, you can't treat it as such because wrestling is not absorbed by people the same way movies and TV are. Exactly. Yep. So, yep. You, there still needs to be an element of realism in your, like, you can never convince me that Brian Myers is a heel because I just take one look at his Instagram and I'm like, wow, this guy looks like he's the best father ever. Why would I ever boo him? Yeah. Yep. You show me Matt Cardona's Instagram, I'm like I'm booing the fuck out of that guy. I hate him. Yep. <laughs> you meet Matt, you meet Brian. But, but it's just it's things like that. Like, you know, like when Matt and Brian, I, this is always the example I use when they were doing their feud in TNA. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm not buying what you're selling. You're doing wow. a podcast. That I, I the, the answer is don't do the feud. Yeah. That should have been, yeah. don't do, you know, I know dreamers said something to them like, Oh, you're going to have to stop the podcast. No, like that's stupid. That's fucking really stupid. You know what the answer is? Don't do the fucking feud. Exactly. Uh, uh, but rest the rest of people do not look at wrestling the same way. They look at the cast of friends like Matthew Perry, RIP. He's just, um, you know, on my mind. Cause it's recent. He could go do fools rush in with Selma Hayek and we can pretend Oh, this is not Chandler. Right. This is whatever his exactly. character in Fools Rush exactly. in. It. That doesn't work with wrestling. Nope. You nope. know, and I as much as the guys want to believe, oh, everyone knows it's fine, but Roman Reigns ain't doing that shit. Exactly. I couldn't agree more. But we, we do the booze with the toys thing. And then the next month, Brian sends me the link to be on booze with the toys again, which I don't think Matt wanted, but Mark and Brian thought I was funny. So like, I just kept coming back. Then the PBR thing comes up and it's literally you and Brian just send me a text saying, Hey, we're at Matt's house doing this. Come hang out. Come hang out. I remember like it was yesterday. Just come hang out. That's all it was. I wasn't like, Oh, you know, if I do something funny and maybe I can, that was not even on my mind. I'm just going to hang out. With my friends, Matt lives 10. If I hit every, every traffic light on the way, it's 15 minutes from me. Yep. So I show up, Chels answers the door. She looks at me. I'm just dressed like me because that's how I dress. Favorite. That's one of my, oh, I love this moment. I remember. I, oh. 
Chelsea opens the door, and I've met her one time before this, when we did the boozing. That is the first time <laughs> yeah. I met her. And she looks at me, and she goes, what the fuck are you supposed to be? And I go, oh, I'm shoes. And she goes, I, I, I know your shoes. Like, you dress like this? You came here like this? I go, well, yeah. And so she, she lets me into the house. And then, like, immediately I saw, like, the guys from PBR look at Brian like, who the fuck is that guy? And, I can't <laughs> him. and Brian's like, oh, that's shoes. Yeah, yeah, whatever. He'll do whatever you want. And um, then I remember I think Broski was doing, like, a costume change at one point. And he, like, comes out of the bathroom and he sees me. He's like, did you go out in public like that? <laughs> yeah. Uh, it was almost like, the same as a Chelsea reaction, but he knew you like a, what's going on here? Like, that's literally just how I, I dress. It. Yep. So all of a sudden, I'm like, I'm just there. And now I'm sitting in the background trying to stay out of the way. And then it was like, hey, shoes, can you uh, can you hold this hose? It's the scene where Chelsea's like shooting you guys with the water gun and it transforms you into the Stomp in Paradise crew or whatever. So I'm like holding the hose behind the camera to really spray you guys. And then we're done with the hose. So they go, OK, can you just go shut it off, put it back? Before I did that is when I start swinging the hose around my head and they hadn't stopped filming. So the camera catches it. The dude taking still photos catches it. And then all of a sudden it was like, Brian's like, hey, let me give you a suplex into the pool. Let me give you a rock bottom. Let me give you an it elbow. Was everything he wanted to give me, but he realized that he couldn't give me. And Mark and Matt was definitely not taking it. And Mark. So it was literally just, hey, shoes. I know you'll do this. Let's go. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, like, I don't care. I'm just, I'm just there to hang out. Yep. So whatever. And then all of a sudden it was like, I was kind of in the commercial. There's the one scene where you got like, you guys are all in the hot tub, like toasting, whatever. Yeah. And I'm just in the back smoking a cigarette. Yeah. And like, yeah. that's, what, <laughs> that's what made it on TV. When PBR went on, uh, put the commercial on during AEW. That's and like the, almost the, clo the closing was me on the raft. I remember it. Like it was the, yes. it was the best. So all my all my scenes got cut yeah. because they couldn't have violence in the commercial. Yep. Yep. Even though it was during a wrestling show cuz all the all the things I was doing was like Brian giving me rock bottom, you know, into the pool yeah. or Brian hitting me with the elbow or, and but the one thing that I got in was me no one noticed me smoking a lung dart in the back. <laughs> <laughs> and when pictures started getting posted from that day, people in the group like went nuts. Like, what is he doing? Like, what is that? Cause I had the mustache. Yeah. I, I was dressed up. Like I, you know, it was just, I never had a mustache before. It was like this wild um, confluence of events that all came together. And it's like, there's a really good picture of me and Matt's dog dude, where I call it like my Prince Eric moment. Cause I'm like looking yes. up and like this and it's like the dog by my side. And it's yep. like, Oh God, we're going to go mermaid hunting or something. Um, and then that just, that stupid thing, just me showing up to Matt's house dressed like that turned into I don't know, going on three years of being a captain That's or a pool a, cleaner, depending yeah. on whatever it is that That's you want to call it. That's what I was going to say. It was like you did the Yokoshuna, and it was kind of like a running gig of you just get beat up or take a bump at the, mm -hmm. at the major shows. And then it was like the PBR commercial, and it was like, Yokoshuna died, and here's the captain. And it was like an instant, oh, man, this is just him now. And that's how – I think people – now, at this point, I feel like people are like, oh, yeah, he did do Yokoshuna. That's right. Because I, captain I, I, is so you. So I had done the captain before Live 8. And then yeah. Live 8, Yoko Shuna was supposed to eat the sandwich. So I remember, like, I was super nervous about the sandwich. Like, I was trying to strategize and everything. And um, the night before, I shaved my mustache. And I we, we, went out, we went out for dinner. I go back to the hotel. I shave my mustache because Yoko Shuna didn't have a mustache. Yep. I show up at Jimmy's the next day. Brian's a me. Oh, my God. What happened to your mustache? And I go, well, Yoko Shuna doesn't have a mustache. And he's like. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Good point. And I ah. do the thing. If I could do the sandwich again, I still wouldn't finish it. I, I'll, I'll, yeah. That's just not possible. 
I would do it a little bit differently. Um, I got too caught up trying to make it visually yep. like I was eating yep. more. So there's a ring of French fries around the plate. And I wanted people to see a big, wide open space on my plate. Yeah. So when I finished the first quarter of the sandwich, I ate the fries from that area. So yeah. you would see this large cutout of just, and I wish I hadn't done that. I wish I would have stuck to the sandwich. I still ate probably around close to half of the sandwich, but I wouldn't have finished it anyway. But then after like the next day, I posted a picture of Poochie from the Simpsons and my whole thing was I was I always looked at myself at especially at that point, uh, like a Simpsons character. I look at everything through the lens of the Simpsons. You can always yep. make a lot of good comparisons to life through the Simpsons. And I'm never gonna be a Simpson. And I'm okay with that. I shouldn't be a Simpson. But there is plenty of opportunity for a side character to come in. So I called myself, I'm like the bumblebee man yep. of the major <clears throat> pod. I'm not a Simpson, but every now and then. I come in, I hit my line, ay, 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 muchos naranjas en la cabeza, and I exit stage left. Yeah. Like, I'm a legendary sidekick. So, uh, I'm, and I'm perfectly happy doing that because I never expected to be doing any of this stuff anyway. Mm -hmm. So, this is all like found money for me. And I post a picture of Poochie and I say, Yoko Shuna died on the way back to his home planet. And then I think the next live show, was at Kowloon. So they yeah. didn't want me portraying an Asian character anyway. Okay. Uh, since it could have been interpreted as yep. offensive. And it was like, hey, why don't you just be this captain guy from now on? And I was like, okay. And then that was the show where we did the pin. They did the special pin of me, yeah. which was like a surprise and very cool. And yeah, it's just kind of been off to the races since. And I think the thing that really put it over the top, uh, and you were there for it, was Live 12 in Dallas, where they paired me with Ziggler. Ziggler. So I was, it, it, when I was making the notes today, I couldn't think of the Ziggler thing was Sh Yoko Shuna or Captain. And now it completely makes sense. Yeah. So I, Live 11 in Orlando, <clears throat> they, yes. they needed me to do something with Breeze. And I'm like, well, I gotta, he's gotta bump me. Like there's, that's the payoff yep. there. Like, and they're like, oh, but no, they love you. They love you. I was like, don't worry. I'll take care of it. So I do a heel turn. It's a show. Like the people buy yep. into it. You know, and we do the thing with Breeze. It gets over. Okay, cool. I'm, you know, I'm happy with it. Breeze seemed to be happy with it. Um, and then live 12, <laughs> Brian texts me in the morning and he's like, Hey, you're doing something with Ziggler tonight. And I'm like, this is not real. Like, <laughs> Um, I don't know Ziggler, but I know he's like a 115 time champion. Yeah. Um, so I'm like, there's no way they're wasting Ziggler on me. So I just like, oh, oh yeah, yeah, man, cool, whatever you want. Yep. I show up at the building. We're setting up. Remember, like the setup that day was a fucking disaster because yep. they changed the room we were supposed to be <clears throat> in. There was problems with the audio. There's problems with every everything was a fucking problem that day. And then it turns out. Like, oh, no, you're really doing something with Ziggler. You better think of something quick. I'm like, oh, fuck. So they bring me downstairs. Ziggler's waiting there. We're, like, going out in three minutes. And I say what's up to him. And um, he's like, what's going to be uh, your go home line? And I go, uh, I'll think of it when I'm out there. And it, he looks at me, like, really serious. And he goes, uh. Cause now I'm just trying to think of stuff that I know about Ziggler. Correct. You know, thankfully I pay enough attention to pop culture where I'm like, okay, I know we dated Amy Schumer. I know he was a collegiate wrestler. You know, there are things I like, yep. I was still watching wrestling when Ziggler was, you know, like, a, you know, still going. So there are things I know about him and I'm trying to put them together. And he's just like, so what's going to be the go home line? And I'm like, I don't know. I'll think of it when I'm out there, but you'll know it when you hear it. And he looks at me and he's like, well, it better be fucking good. And I was like, bro, this ain't the first time I've done one of these. <laughs> <laughs> and from the second I got out there, I, I like, I made a joke about Mark Sterling. Uh, then I said something about, um, I go calling you a professional comedian 
is the equivalent of calling myself a professional wrestler for all my time spent on the independence. <laughs> and he Ziggler makes the comment like, oh, I'm sorry, what's independent wrestling? <laughs> and I remember hitting the line, oh, it's this thing Matt does nowadays. It's adorable. You got to see it. Like, hey, <laughs> 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 yeah and then like i was just feeling it and i was like throwing off zingers it was like right after the oscars so i made a joke amy schumer had just hosted the oscars so i made a joke about that you know i fit in a joke about like you know you were a wrestler in college but i was also an athlete and i pay i actually played a sport that americans care about soccer (laughs) 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 you know it just like it was one of those things where it was like I was just feeling it, you know, like sometimes you yeah. just get in the zone, you're feeling it. Um, the payoff was fine. I wish I could have hit the line a little bit differently looking back, but it is what it is. Um, but I remember the next day, like Matt said to me, he's like, shoes, I'm really proud of you. And I'm like, thanks. Like, <laughs> like hearing it from a stepdad. And yeah. And then like Brian was like, holy shit. Like, fuck. I thought, I thought he was going <laughs> to take a bump off that line. And, uh, you know, I think that's where I kind of got over with Matt. And then yeah. Matt was more okay with like, oh, you know what? Like shoes could do this. But like every time there's something to do, like Brian's always like, oh, you know what? Like shoes can do that. So they, they had an opening. They needed someone to fill a show on the Patreon side of the network. Brian was yeah. like, hey, what about shoes? Okay. Shoes is doing this. 19 people double book themselves or get hurt and can now can't beat the headbangers for uh, the t- uh, FWF tag belts when they need to get the belts off them. Brian says, Hey, what about shoes? So like all this, like I, like I'm just lucky enough to be Brian Myers yeah. friend. I asked the old discord today, the very special going possible discord. I said, guys, you're a very, very special group to me. Having the shoes on what you got. So I'm going to take a couple questions. Your discord. I don't, I don't know. Do they like me? Probably they some of them that. do. Probably some I, of them I, don't. I feel like everyone. I feel like you're. It's like ninety nine to one of liked, and then like, oh god damn it, shoes. I think it's that. It's uh the first one. Is okay, from Justin, I'm ready. Who is a longtime supporter and listener of everything going postal and the Dylan Postal brand? Uh, you do coffee creamer reviews, shoes. We're gonna hit the plugs. I do. I I, I love coffee creamers. I love trying. We're gonna them hit out. the plugs in a bit. You do on YouTube all these reviews about coffee creamers. So his question was: If all coffee creamers disappeared, besides one, which would it be? Ooh. There are a couple that I would nope. uh, one that are in the room. One, Joe. If I had to pick just one. I believe it's Coffee Mate that makes it. It is the Snickers flavored coffee creamer. That one is amazing. It's one of the ones that like when you taste it, you're like, this is a fucking Snickers and there's no doubt about it. So many of these coffee creamers will often have like flavor um, partnerships built in and you're like, "Mm, I wish it was more. I wish it gave me more. Like I get the hint of it, but I want more Snickers. There's no doubt. You could drink that shit straight and be like, I'm going to get diabetes and definitely be okay with it. (laughs) Awesome. Uh, Second one, our friend Slowpoke. Again, huge supporter of Going Postal, of Big Shoony brand on Twitch, everything. I'm going to go off the the question he had and make it a bit of my own. You, like myself, are, are a fast foodie. Um, so my, the, the, the question to you is you can combine multiple fast food stops, but you get one meal. You get to make one supper. What supper are you making? Okay. So are we saying like an entree sandwich, fries and a drink? Is that what we're doing? Like we're, we're going to make a, no. we're going to, co- we're going to make a combo. No, you can make, you can, you can literally make your meal. It can be, it doesn't have to be like okay. a value meal. Make your meal. Okay, so if I was like essentially your getting, your last meal, your, my last your, yeah, my last meal, yep. but I get to combine different items from different fast food restaurants. Correct. Okay, we are going to get the spicy chicken sandwich for, from Wendy's. Okay, it is not my favorite chicken sandwich. It's just it's like the one. It's like the meaningful one because it's okay. been around so long. It was the game changer when it first came out in the nineties. 
The best chicken sandwich out right now is the Popeye's one. That thing is amazing. Thank you. Um, it's unbelievable. You know what? Let's spicy go with the Popeye's sandwich. one. I'm, so Popeye's spicy chicken sandwich. No, I think you're going Wendy's. N- yeah, we're going to change it. So Popeye's chicken sandwich. Nathan's crinkle cut French fries. Okay. Fucking unbelievable. Get the the the, the cheese on it, the whiz with okay. the little red fork. That way you can eat. You don't get that fuck. They give you a fucking utensil because who wants to be touching it and get that fucking shit? I hate getting shit all over my fucking hands. I like I know it. you're the king of doo doo and chocolate all over yourself. Love it. I get that, but I like I'm a habitual hand washer. Like I wash my hands probably twenty times a day. Like I just okay. feel like like oh like I come in I sweat too much or whatever. I'm fat and it's hot. I gotta wash my hands. I touch something. I gotta wash my hands. I fucking wipe my ass. I better wash my hands. You know, like, <laughs> I gotta wash my hands. <laughs> the last thing I want is to have this fucking cheese sauce on my hands. <laughs> even if I napkin it, even if I do the soda cup trick, you know, like the condensation that builds up on your soda cup, you use that as moisture to then you get the napkin yeah. to clean your hands. That's not good enough for me. Like I need soap and shit. <laughs> so Nathan's gives you a fucking fork and for good reason, they put a lot of cheese on it, but those fries are great. They're, they're cooked to perfection. The crinkle cut is dynamite. Those are dynamite. Okay. Go get those. Um, the, Oh, geez. I'm trying to think like people I'm trying to, you know, I don't want to go with like what is thought of as like everyone nope, says McDonald's I want, fries, you, I want fries. your meal. So I would get the Popeye's chicken sandwich, the Nathan's fries. The drink is just going to be a, a Coca-Cola or a Pepsi. I, if possible, I prefer a Pepsi. I'm a Pepsi guy. So you're going to so go give to Taco Bell and Pepsi. I'm going to go to Taco Bell and get a wild cherry Pepsi. Okay. Okay. Because that's my favorite soda in the world. Okay. Then I'm also going to go to Wendy's. Now I'm going to go to Wendy's. I know it's coming. And get two junior bacon cheeseburgers. Remember when these were 99 cents? You remember? Bro, they're like three bucks now. Yes. I they would, were 99 I cents. Them, I would get a fiver. I, you used to be able to eat like a king off the dollar menu, no matter anywhere. where you went. Burger anywhere. King, McDonald's, Wendy's, anywhere. Taco Bell had a hell of a dollar menu. Bro, you could go to Taco yeah. Bell, spend $7, and get 29 different items. Yep. Yep. And when my, my friends and I, we used to get together and watch Monday Night Raw like every day and like every week in like 2000. Family We'd night? get together, go to, go to my buddy's house. We go watch Monday Night Raw. We get in the car at the end of it, all hyped up because the fucking Canadian Chris's just beat Triple H and Steve Austin for the tag belts. And we we go over to Taco Bell and sit there and just fucking munch on fucking tacos and be like, oh my god, this fucking ruled. And we we'd sing this, you know, the opening to Raw song, the da 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 you know, but like we go to Taco Bell, and we're poor. We're like college kids yeah. working fucking bullshit jobs for like five, six bucks an hour. So it was like, oh my god, we go to Taco Bell, get a hundred things, dude. You used to you used to get like the taco ten pack for like seven bucks. Yep. Like this is why I look the way I do because the the more you if you buy in bulk, you got it at a better price. And to me, you that always made it. sense. You can always fridge them. You can always fridge. Them. No, you can't. You. No, you just oh. eat them when the, when they're still. <laughs> <to be eaten. laughs> you, you just eat them all. Same thing with the same thing. I smoke hundreds because they're the same price as the shorts. Like, give me more <laughs> cigarette if you're charging me the same. <sighs> okay. Popeye spicy chicken, <laughs> crinkle cuts from Nathan's, a wild wild. Pepsi, wild cherry, wild Pepsi, cherry Pepsi, from Taco and Bell, two junior drink. bacon cheeseburgers. Two junior bacon's is that it? I mean, yeah, like that would be it. Okay. I would say um, an so honorable you're not, mention. You're not including anything from McDonald's at all. McDonald's is uh, here's I the thing. I thought you were going to go for a six piece nugget. I, I I do love a good nugget. 
That's I thought you were going there. But I prefer if I'm gonna have chicken in my meal, the the chicken sandwiches, I always preferred the chicken sandwiches to the burgers. So when I was a kid, yep. I never I like I always my happy meal was always the four piece McNugget when I yep. was a kid. And then when Burger King came out with the long chicken sandwich, the original chicken sandwich. Can we talk about the original changer. chicken, Joe? Can we talk about this? You and I have talked about this. We you can talk about this because I, I, let me tell you guys, um, full disclosure, my first job was working at a Burger King. The original chicken sandwich, we've talked about this, is not good fresh. It has to be under the heat lamp for at least three to four minutes. Otherwise, it's greasy. I mean, to, it's greasy. To me, that's fresh, though. Oh, well, here's the thing. No. It, also, it also depends just how long it's been since it came out of the oil. Exactly. So if I remember correctly, the original chicken sense. sandwich, it used to go into the oil for three minutes and 15 seconds. And then from there, it gets transferred to a holding tray. So you would take your yep. the thing, you'd have them lined up like four in a row. You put it into the tray and it would go under a heat lamp. And it had like a grate in it so that it can drain a little bit so the oil can come out. If you're getting one immediately after it comes out of the oil, it's too hot and, you know, that, that oil will burn you a little bit. Yep. But to me, if it's sitting there for two minutes already and now it spends another two minutes under, under the heat lamp on the sliding thing, then that, that, that to, to me, like optimum, yep. whatever. That's how it should Perfect. be. Served. And I like it because it's simple. It's just mayo and lettuce. Simple. They do the international ones every now and then. When they came out, when I was a kid, I was like probably like nine or ten. They came out with the Italian chicken sandwich. Chicken par. That to me, that to me, because like when I think when I got to remember, I'm like lower middle class as a kid. Both my yeah. parents worked multiple jobs. Like I never felt poor, but like looking back, I'm like, oh shit. Like I don't know how my parents made that work because we were pretty fucking poor. Um, um, but like what like a. Chicken parm felt like the most luxurious dinner yes. you could have. Yep. Because it wasn't something like we got at home a lot. My parents, like my mom was working so much that she really didn't cook. So my grandmother would do most of the cooking and we'd get like spaghetti and stuff, you know, here and there, but we never got like chicken parm. We never got like big ziti. So like these fancy Italian dishes, mm -hmm. like someone had to get married for me to get like fucking <laughs> chicken parm. <laughs> Like I needed like an older cousin to finally tie the knot so I like yeah. could get what what I think a fancy meal is, and Burger King coming out with the Italian chicken sandwich was like, I'd sit there with that paper crown on my head and I'd just look at my dad and I'd be like, we fucking made it, didn't we? We made it. <laughs> <laughs> funny Joe. story about my dad. Can I tell you this quick story about my Please. dad? Please, this is a funny. So my, my dad was a, a really good dude, like a, just a genuinely decent human being. And I love this story. He worked his balls off so I could have a, a good childhood. Every Christmas was fucking packed. I like, like I said, I never felt poor, but I just don't know how my parents were able to pull off what they did when I was a kid. I had like every toy I could ever want, whatever. Um, when they finally retired, my dad had been on disability at MS. He got diagnosed with MS when I was nine or 10. And eventually, like, he withered a little bit and he had to stop working. Um, when my mom finally retired, they bought this house in Florida. Now, my mom's sisters, she has three sisters. They all had moved down to Florida already in the same neighborhood. And it was a nice looking place. The kind of place that, like, my family is not usually welcome at. And I had been there to visit. My mom had seen the area. So we know it's nice. My dad had never been. So when they buy the house, my dad goes down him and i float, fly down for the first time my aunt and uncle pick us up from the airport we're driving into the community and there's this beautiful landscaping and there's this big fountain at the front and he's my dad's looking around and he like tugs on my shirt and he's like hey where are we and i go oh this is where you live now and he goes he like thinks about it for a second he goes i can't live here rich white people live here and i look back at him and he's dead serious he's not even like joking around he's just like amazed and i i look at him and i go well congratulations you're rich and white now <laughs> and he looks and he looks back at him he goes you know i've always wanted to be white <laughs> <laughs> 
We're not we're not topping that. <laughs> Shoes. Uh we met at Live Six, as I recall very vaguely. You took care of me then. You, uh, our friendship has blossomed into one I hold very, very close. Um, I talk to you every day, and I appreciate mm-hmm. it all the time. You are a, such a good-hearted human through and through. I, I love seeing you. I love hearing from you. My son loves you it's so much. And he just, he, you are the man. Thank he you got his Joe Shoes Major Bendy's figure now, right? He literally, I shoes made of made out one of his Major Bendy's. Uh, he he inscribed one to Landon while Landon was at school. I put it on his Darby shelf. It took him two days to see it. He then comes out to me. I was in the living room. He comes out. He goes, Dad, that ain't moving from that shelf. <laughs> and it was it was literally the coolest thing ever. Thanks, Dylan buddy. was nervous. I, I was gonna write something inappropriate on it. I hundred percent one for Landon. I a hundred percent thought it was gonna be something, uh, very over the top. Landon, like it would have been suitable for Landon, but still very over the top. And uh, man, it it <laughs> was awesome. I, I sincerely cannot thank you enough. So uh, let me thank you for having me on. Let me thank your listeners for putting up with me. Um, my mom, I told my mom I was doing your show tonight and she got excited because she's seen you in the vlogs and stuff now. And she goes, Oh, that's the little guy with the toes. That's great. He... <laughs> so like, he's like, oh, he's like, he's a really big star. I go, yeah, it just sucks that his star has fallen. So drastically <laughs> that he has to resort to having me on, <laughs> you know, Love I, I look at, I feel like we are the Carson Daly and Jennifer Love Hewitt where like, I've kind of held. On <laughs> my level. And then I look at you and I go, Hey Dylan, remember when you were popular? <laughs> I literally, it's funny you say that I danced with uh, Jennifer Love Hewitt yeah. at a WrestleMania party. There's a, so a good. there's a TMZ report about it. I, I talked about it randomly on the pod. I'm going, I'm going postal. Yeah. You talked about it on my show on captain's log. That's what it was too. That's right. Yeah. Shoes before we leave, plug your shit, please. Guys, I'm everywhere on social media at the Joe shoes, Instagram, Twitter, blue sky threads. We're all having so much fun on threads. We love it. TikTok. I barely post there. I'm old, guys. I don't understand TikTok. I don't know how you become a star on TikTok because I put together some videos that I'm like, oh, this is good. And it gets like fucking 60 views. And then my cousin will post a fucking video of just his Halloween decorations. And it gets <laughs> fucking 220,000 views. And I go, this fucking app sucks. This is for children. For goddamn Thank children. You. I don't Thank get you. it. Uh Car Jomez podcast. It's my weekly pop culture podcast. We uh, do a lot of movie rewatches, TV shows, like what's going on right now. And I'll tell you about like the newest fast food stuff because I stay in touch with that. So that's every Thursday, wherever you get podcasts or on YouTube, you can watch the show. Captain's log, obviously, in the Patreon section of the major pod network. Without this what is I call two boys up. yucking it up and doing really good at it. Why? Because I am the Yanni of yucking. So that's it. That is part two of the interview with thy captain, our captain, Joseph Shoes. I had so much fun. I hope you guys really, really enjoyed uh, just two friends having a laugh and get a little insight onto someone you might not know about. Make sure to follow him on all forms of social media. Uh, he's a very entertaining social media -er. Is that a thing? Yeah, I'll take it. Dylan Postalism again. Well, you learned about shoes. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Leave it in the comments uh, of the YouTube video. Leave it in the comments on your review on Apple Pod or wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts, including this one. George can talk a little more about that. Go, George. Hit him with it. 
Well, also, you got to go and check out the Car Joe Mez podcast. That is our good friend Captain Joe Shoes podcast. And uh, make sure to go follow them and listen to them on all forms of social media and wherever you listen to your podcast. But in terms of my plugs and where you can do stuff like that, uh, yeah, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, um, wherever you listen to podcasts, leave Going Postal a five-star rating and review. And then I also have another podcast. It is the Game Marks Podcast. It is myself and former Create a Pro champion, Johnny Clash. But Dylan likes to refer to our good friend as... Cruz. Thank you. And we break down a different wrestling video game each and every week. We are currently live on YouTube every Thursday. We are raising money for St. Jude Children's Research Hospital every Thursday, 8 p.m., playing video games, doing episodes live. Uh, there are little incentives that you can do that will change and mess with the episode. Sometimes we have to sing for a minute uh, everything that we say. Sometimes we have to talk in a high pitch voice. We have to cut wrestling promos on each other, which I am terrible at. And John's really good at because he's a wrestler. Uh, talking wrestler voices for a minute while we go through the episode. It's chaos. It's a lot of fun. Uh, we have a good time and you can be a part of that every single Thursday from now until the end of December. YouTube.com slash game marks podcast. Uh, but that's it, man. We've done the social plugs part one and part two of Captain Joe Shoes, our double main man, our good pal. And without further ado, there's nothing really left for you to do, Dylan, except that signature outro. Oh, <laughs>